Hello. Today, I'd like to talk to you about InSource in the Enterprise and the experience of National Australia Bank over the last two and a half years. My name is Matt Cobby, and I'm Engineer Manager for the NabCloud Guild, where we're an industry leading capability uplift team. I previously led engineering strategy and the DevOps practice lead here at NAB. I've been involved in open source for over 25 years, having written my thesis using open source software. And I've worked in many industries from financial services to media and to startups. And if you're interested in connecting later, you can reach me on LinkedIn or on Twitter. For 160 years, NAB has been helping our customers with their money. Today, we have more than 30,000 colleagues, serving 9 million customers at over 900 locations throughout Australia, New Zealand, and around the world. NAB is Australia's largest business bank, and we build relationships with small, medium enterprises and large businesses to help them start, run, and grow. NAB is a relationship-led bank, and we exist to serve customers well and help our communities prosper. It is that commitment to communities that has led us to InnoSource. As a 160-year-old bank, like so many other banks, we are in the process of becoming a digital native bank, but it's not without its challenges. We started our transformation in 2017 to simplify our business and home lending, invest in bankers, simplify our processes, and uplift our technology to improve the customer experience. We're improving resilience via insourcing and migration of apps to the cloud. And we're halfway through our cloud migration. Over the last three and a half years, we've run over 7,000 trading places to uplift cloud and engineering skills. And in 2019, we created our NAB Engineering Foundations to simplify our engineering practices and remove the undifferentiated heavy lifting of teams so they can focus on the customer value adding work. But this led to some challenges. Um, we're faced with the rapid enablement of teams on cloud. Now we migrated Australia's first highly confidential banking workload to public cloud in 2016. And we enabled teams to move rapidly and take control of their own outcomes. But this led to duplication of tooling and there was a need to reduce the cost per workload to scale faster. And it was in this situation that um, I found myself looking for a tool to automate AWS credentials set up. And I found 20 different versions of the same tool across GitHub. Some were supported and some weren't, and some were uh, fully functioning and some were less than perfect. And I felt that this was definitely one of these places where we were not being as efficient as we could be. And I felt that the techniques of open source development could help us improve. And with the introduction of our NAB Engineering Foundations, um, we wanted to introduce the voice of the customer into these opinionated solutions. We wanted to make sure that these solutions met our customer needs. And you know, the best way to do that was to have, again, use these open source development techniques. Being a bank, we also had challenges around governance, risk, and compliance. Um, we're heavily regulated and regulated in multiple countries, and we've got concerns around security and architectural endorsement. We also had, uh, being such a large tech company, we were, had silos across the organization, and we really wanted to reduce that cost of experimentation in order to help teams um, develop new ideas to test out new business solutions quickly and efficiently. So this led to source. This is our definition of inner source. And for us, it's much more than just a shared code base. It's everything we need to be a high performing team, code, skills, and knowledge. By publishing code and knowledge in the open, we encourage people to talk across their respective silos and we share work. And this allows us to focus on business outcomes and not this undifferentiated heavy lifting that we all have to reinvent. Now with inner source, we created a, an operating model we set out with the mission of developing a high quality software. With hundreds of dev teams across the organization, all working in their own way, we focused on the interfaces between teams and not the individual team's way of working. This allows us to create a safe environment for engineers to talk to other engineers across the bank, to reach out, to understand their code bases and to share their work. This is our operating model, which balances the needs of the community and of governance. The community champions on the left here are very much our evangelists on the ground with support. They make sure that the peers know about our inner source and they're running community showcases for new products. And they do the necessary due diligence uh, for code coming into inner source. They post it with these community showcases, they host, um, they do peer review on the products. They check that the product meets certain criteria such as we know what problem it solves, 
that it isn't a duplication of the existing product, that it meets the minimum standards and it has a strong ownership. It's at this point as well that security and architecture both have a, a voice and can endorse or query any individual product. When we have multiple solutions to the same problem, we'll build a small community around that problem and we'll work with all the interested parties to reduce that duplication and come up with a better solution for everyone. On the other side of the model is a culture of strong product ownership. This is where we make sure that each product within Intersource has a distinct product owner. Their responsibilities are around uh, making sure that the product meets the minimum standards, that it has a workflow, that there's somebody there to, um, to read and evaluate the pull requests, to make sure these pull requests meet certain SLAs. They're there to provide technical support for the products and to be there to uh, take answers, um, to take questions from people when they're asking about contributions to the products. We're there to make sure that the repo has a very strong code ownership and that they're working with protected branches in order to make sure that there's a basic level of governance there. We also provide these uh, product owners with a playbook in order to help them in source their own platforms and own products. And all of this again is built on top of our Nabi Engineering Foundation and the governing principles there. So this is our minimal viable governance that balances the needs of a bank in terms of uh, architecture endorsement, security endorsement, ownership, accountability, audibility, with the needs of an open source community to be creative and dynamic. Now, to help us build this pipeline of products internally, we attach a classification to each product. We talk about the curated or the community products. The purpose of this is to ensure that when consuming teams um, are looking at what they can use, they have the confidence that the code they're using is endorsed and has production level support. But we don't set the bar so high that the community projects can't get started. So typically, a curated project is one where um, it's, it's proven production. We know that it's gone through all our normal existing operational processes. We know that it's running in production with customer workload. We know that it's been security tested, it's been pen tested. Um, it encapsulates typically many years of uh, learning experience across the organization. And there's often significant investment behind it. This means that there are very few curated products, but they are very high quality. On the community side, we embrace our open source um, origins. And this is more of an incubator for new ideas. We make sure there's a very low barrier to entry. Uh, we make sure that we tend to use a more open source style support model um, where it's often by best endeavors. And the typical products we see in the space are around tooling or individual pipeline components, which are used in the delivery of applications. You may also find some other ideas in here, such as new concepts or um, results of experiments. And in this classification, we typically have many different products. Now with our repositories, we have a minimum standards that we work and we're very light touch. As mentioned earlier, we focus on the boundary between teams and not the individual teams themselves. We don't specify how teams work or what their individual workflows are. What we're doing here is to create a safe place for teams to reach out and to work on other teams uh, repositories and in a clear, consistent way. Now to do this, we make sure that every um, inner source repository and every inner source product has a readme that makes it very clear what the product is doing and what problem it's solving. We make sure the code owners is maintained and up to date so that external developers know who to talk to when they have a question. There's a contributing guide so that when you want to make a change, there's a very clear path for you to do so. And a code of conduct to make sure that you know the acceptable behaviors for the team. We also recommend the, all the products work with a further set of metadata templates around standardizing workflow for pull requests and issues, and they offer just a much more consistent experience. There's been a number of years with InnerSource here at NAB, so we can talk about some of the learnings and benefits that we're seeing. As you all know, and if you've been familiar with InnerSource, collaboration is one of the main reasons we do this. Uh, when we write code in the open, we tend to write better code. When we have the ability to read another team's repository, we have the ability to remove bottlenecks. If a team, if you're dependent upon a team and they can't implement your change, you have the ability to make the change yourself and get it accepted into the, into the core product. We're then also breaking down the silos of the organization and help learning from one area be applied into different areas. 
But with its openness that comes to the inner source, we're improving upon discoverability. Um, we're improving upon the, the ease of finding the source of truth for a piece of information. And we're reusing intellectual property across the different domains. Inner source has also brought us some unexpected benefits around mentorship across skilling and learning. Um, we found through some of the inner source hackathons that we ran that we had senior engineers mentoring junior engineers. We found front end developers learning how to be API developers. We've had back end business service developers learning how to be front end React developers. Um, this is one of the real unexpected benefits from inner source and something which has given us probably far more return on investment than we ever expected. And one of the main benefits to, for us is this cross skilling of people across the organization. And with trans transparency, um, everything's in the open. Uh, we peer review each other's work. Our discussions are in the open. So in the future, we can always find out why a certain architectural decision was made or why the decision was made not to use a particular technology. We're also working with GitHub on uh, automating some of our metrics for in, in the source. Uh, we're looking at the number of people collaborating across teams. We're looking at things such as product reuse. We have automation that tells us, that scans GitHub for dependency management and tells us how many reuses of an individual library that we're seeing. And we can then quantify, quantify that library reuse into a financial terms in terms of um, how much it costs to develop and then how many times it's been reused. And we're also using the metrics for operational health for any source products, because it's very, very important to check that products don't end up in some wasteland. Uh, we're using some of this metrics and reporting to find products which need some help or need an owner, and then we step in and give them this help. So in terms of future opportunities for source, uh, we are probably two and a half years into this with the National Australia Bank. And I think we still have a long way to go. We've been looking at how can we in the source our business platforms? Uh, with some of the benefits we've seen before about decoupling teams and removing the, the, the blockers from coupled backlogs, there's a real business potential here for understanding how um, we can ease delivery through the organization and across multiple platforms. Um, there's still significant challenges there around developer experience, um, around integrated test environments, um, around uh, ownership and support of changes, but um, we're particularly looking at aspects of API design and, and implementation of where we can apply in source techniques. With automated uh, metrics, I believe we've got a long way to go there as well. Um, we just scratched the surface in terms of what we can do. Uh, I believe that uh, the source code of an organization is often an untapped source of intelligence. And there's a lot of information there that we could look at and help us understand what are the flows of information across the organization. And with discoverability, we've invested a lot of time, but I think there's still a lot more work to be done. And at its heart, inner source is a people initiative. And it's all about community. Um, we have a lot more work to do with community building, both within our organization and outside of our organization. Um, we're here very much to help our communities prosper. Um, it's one of our key strategic initiatives in the bank. And with that community, it's here in Australia, New Zealand, or across the world. We're here, we'd like, love to help uh, more of you with your source journey. We'd like to hear from some of your experiences. And we'd love to hear from uh, particularly regulated environments with some of the challenges that you see. So thank you very much for your time today. Um, as you know, we'll be across in the Slack channel to there to answer your questions. If you have anything else you'd like to know, um, please come speak to me.